First of all, I want to, I'm very grateful for all the organizers because I like Turkic languages. I don't know Turkish so good, but I've studied it. I like Istanbul very much. Unfortunately, I cannot come to you today, but I am connected to you online. I hope myself in Istanbul and I'm drinking Turkish coffee. Today, we will talk on technical theme, but please do not sleep. It's not so terrible. It will be interesting for you all. For all of you who are using Wikisites and Wikimedia, all of you who are translating. So, everything will be interesting for you. Okay, we will talk today about the translatable modules. So I will let you know what is translatable, what is module, and maybe it will be... It will be easy for you to understand for the people who will be here, who was here ne last year. That's why I gave such a name to this presentation and I'll give you some topics today I hope it will be interesting for you I'll talk about nature about arts and about Turkish countries Okay, so this is from the country Saha. It's one of the eastern part. Okay, so first, what is localization and what is translation? Here you can see panel. It should be formal for all of you who are writing in Wiki. It is the panel for the edition. On the top you can see the panel in English. And then you see the same in Turkish language. So we have everything the same. But the names written are written in different languages. So how could we can do it? We are doing this on the website. It's formal for you. We can see all the context in English, which is using in IT and in Wikimedia. It's written in English. And there is a translation. So there is an example how to translate it into Turkish. We can use Wikibase Vikpo. It provides us to use this website. And most of this is translated into Turkish. So Turkish language here is in good mode. So everything is in the uh, green, as you can see, green color. It means that most of things are translated. And what is in blue, it means like it should be translated. Now, we can see on the side core. Okay, now I will explain you what is core and what is extensions. So core is the middle of the platform that is using on the website. It shows us how to edit the page and extensions. So you know what is extensions? Like we can extend the visual data, it can show us the pages on the phones, and so on. Okay. Everything translated into wiki.net and EAT. So how to translate it? You can see the examples, how to translate it into Turkish. So have you ever heard about abstract Wikipedia? 
there is new site, web, website, it's based on the data. But here, it translated. You can see on the top green line, it was translated before. We can see the white line, it's not translated yet, not translated into Turkish yet. And we can see yellow lines, it was pr translated before, but we should update them so that this is uh, this word should be updated it's written that they are outdated so we should update them now you can see the statistics you can see Wikibase clear statistics so it helps us to connect Wikipedia to Wikidata. You can see here the statistics. There is the names of the languages, which languages, and it's written how they translate, how much they translated are. You can see the Turkish, it translated 100%, all of them translated, and some of them are not translated. For example, Portugal, Chinese and so on. Okay, so it's written that some of the languages are translated totally and some of them are not. And we can do everything in order to translate everything until 100%. Now, a little bit note. So, this is for engineers. You can see the code. You can see JSON file. All of the lines has key and there is some context in English. You can see the key. For example, it's written on Wikipedia's edit, Wikipedia's add, Wikipedia's label empty, and so on. So you can see also JSON so the language so. So the translation is written in different ways. But translators shouldn't use these files. Everything is written in English language and the files of translation are doing with this with the help of this interface. So translator shouldn't be a programmer, shouldn't be an IT. Translator translating so there is one problem. Translatewiki is the site so there is also extension which works on translate wiki.net wikidata commons meta and so on so everything has the same extension with translation so what is the difficulty it is from the mountain Birge. It's mountain Birge. So you can see the Dugian art. And here we'll talk about the difficulties of the model. What is module? So we have some samples. You all know what is samples. So often we're often using the templates. So what is samples? It's written here. For example, when we're adding some pictures, so module is the same, but modules are more technical. And sometimes they're writing the logics for their programs. We will not speak about the details, but the templates are written on the same language as the websites. It is the same thing. And module is the code for the ITs. 
it is the language for IT. And the people who are not working these networks, the modules are helping us, they are using in templates. So only with the help of modules, we can take the information from Wikidata and show it in Infobox. And modules, modules has the oven difficulties to understand. It is the software program. So what's the problem? Modules are the organizers, and we should respect them. But the problem is the translators of the modules are also the organizers, are also the developers. For example, you can see here on Wikidata, we are adding the option. So in Turkish, the option is other lake. Okay, here you can see thousands of properties. We can add more options here. We have the templates for it. And these templates are using modules inside. And these modules, you can see the word description data, values, examples, one, two, or three. So let's check the same page in Japanese. It's the same page. I do not know the Japanese language. And I want to show you that it's written in another alphabet. Everything is written in Japanese and I cannot read it. I just want you to see it, that everything is translated. Let's see everything in Turkish again. So the same page, but the language is Turkish. Here you can see that we translate only first words. For example, you can see that it's written Achiklama, that is description. But for example, a load values, example, the name of examples, one to three, is written in English. It has not been translated into Turkish. Kainak is translated into Turkish, but not plant used. Why? Why is not translated? So these are the translations of modules. It's written how to translate the website. So if you are not doing modules, if you are not the organizer of the modules, so the problem is if you want to translate something, you want to use the codes, the special codes. So here you can see the example of slow unhold. It's written in different languages. In Turkish, it's Beklemede. For example, if I know Azerbaijan well, I can see the Azerbaijani translation. So how I will find it? I should check out the website. Okay, and if I found the module and I want to edit the word, and I found that I can add the line. If you see here the, my mistake, please let me know. Which mistake I did? Okay, I forgot to put a comma. A comma is not put in here. Why should I put it? I want to be a translator. Why should I put? Why should I put comma? So if I'm here and I, I'm translator, I'm volunteer, and I want to add the translator, but I forgot that I, I forgot to put a comma. So I can, in this way, so all the module. So translators should work with 
with the source files. They do not need to miss, mess around with the source files. Okay, when we're translating the media data, we should work on the modules and some words for the engineers. These lines are using in a very easy way. Here you can see translate and you can see on hold. So the engineers did this and it translates from English into the language we need. Okay. So this is not only the function we have. There are many other functions and modules are using other functions. Okay, why it's not mentioned in extensions? Because the translation is the same. So there are some functions of the module. Here you can see the problems. So there is a disadvantages. It's not standard, uh, standardized, it's hard to find, it's without statistics, there is no statistic. So if I know how to translate into Turkish, and if I know that there is no translation into Turkish, there is no, there is no checking of outdated messages. So I showed you before that on the website there are old messages. They are not updated there in yellow line. So if something in English is, if there is an old word in English, nobody can mention it that it's old word. But there is another advantage. For example, it's very easy to change. So it's a wiki page. We can edit it. We can publish it. So everything is in correct way. For example, when you are changing something in extension, you should wait for the organizers for to uh, proof your edit. So the second advantage is no need to wait several days for deployment. This is the second one. And you can easily proof if you want to change something. And third, usually easy to revert if broken. So how we can improve the website? So here you can see the yurt in the artist garden. It is the picture. So two years ago, when they asked me to help with Altai Wikipedia, I've studied Altai art, and I found this picture. I liked it. I want you to see it as well. It was drawn in 1912. So then how we can find a solution how we can solve the problem so translatable modules are not ready yet but they're still working on it so there is another so in Turkish I found the message and this is external external information so when you're on the module when the module will be ready soon you'll be able to reach the information so here it will be written the page on the wiki no files no any extra work there will be only a page on the wiki site with the end of JSON, and this page will be read with the same extension of translation, which is working on translate wiki. So it is it is 
not ready yet, but it's still working. Okay, Asaf is doing the project when he is doing different projects. Please, you can ask your questions to Asaf. My team is helping Asaf's team with translation of these materials, and now it's doing with this JSON file. So very soon, same JSON files you will be able to use with translations of the modules. It will be on all multilingual sites, Meta, Wikidata, Wikibase, Wiki.org, and so on. And it will work with modules. I will show you how. It will be usable for for the readers. So you will be able to see the content. You will be able to see the translated content. So how it will work? So you can see the translation of module now. And I hope that it will not work anymore. So here you can see the function of translation. What will be in future? In future it will be something like that. So the organizer will be right will be writing their site, website. So it's as I showed you before, but now there will be a key, an identification key. It will be written in English. English will be written by organizers. Then when JSON file will be done once time, we will need to change the content module for it. We should do it once for the page, only once for the page. Most probably we will be allowed to do this only for those people who are doing the organizations of their modules, then we'll be able to translate all the lines here with the same interface as a translated .NET. So again, I'm telling you that it's working, but it is only for the translations of the materials. We should update this module. Okay, now it's looking at this, like this, then it will be like this, the slide in the slide. When the JSON will be in another format, you'll be able to see it. I'm not sure how we'll call it. Maybe it will be something in a different way, but it will be very common with this. So for the translators, everything will change. Translators will not, they will not ought to translate all of the things. Everything will be translated automatically. The module of the translation will be the same, but the translator will, will do the less work, lesser work. Now, I'll tell you, if the people know me, they know that there is something which I'm interested in. It is the samples, and I'm interested how the people will use the templates on the website. So they're asking me how we how we will do that, and I'm telling them that I have the project. It is still upgrading. In Russian, it's global templates. You can see on this website, everything is translated into Turkish and Russian, and there is 100% translation. Maybe it's interesting for you. You can check it on the website. And one day, I hope that we'll, we'll be able to use only one template for all the languages. But still, it's not ready yet, but I hope 
very soon we will be able to like these modules will be one of the big parts of the modules so if you have the questions I'm ready to ask you can ask them I'm ready to help you thank you language should I ask? Can I ask it? Okay. Can you can you hear us, Amir? Uh, I can I can hear now. Uh, you can speak English and you can speak uh, Russian. Okay. So let me just speak uh, in English. So um, I guess two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, the global templates. Um, you know, what steps should we take to kind of experiment with those templates? Say on our local wiki. Uh, number two, uh, why is there a separate translation, um, I guess, process for translating, for example, wiki stats? I translated the whole interface. I think it was on translate wiki, yes. I, I did translate the whole interface, like 100% on translate wiki, but it took like five months for someone to notice and kind of um, <coughs> deploy the changes manually. And I translated without seeing the uh, website, and now I realize my some of my translations are awkward. So I'm changing them, but I have to ping someone, like, you know, find someone, ping someone to kind of deploy them manually for the changes to take place, which is very, you know, um, I guess, I don't know, kind of um, annoying in a way, um, because uh, I want to see my changes right away, as you know, most of us wiki, wiki people, we love uh, to see our work right away, you know. <laughs> so I was wondering why are there separate steps for some translate wiki items to go through, I don't know, revisions, or for someone to manually uh, deploy them? Thank you. Um, good question. Uh, so, uh, okay, so there are two questions. I, uh, I'll answer the second question first, because for I, like, I know the technical answer. It's, it's much easier. Um, the reason is that uh, the wiki stats thing, it's translated at the same place and using the same method on translatewiki.net. But wiki stats is a separate piece of software. It's not uh, a part of media wiki. So it has its own, uh, uh, it has its own development team and it has a different uh, deployment schedule. Uh, which is unfortunate for media wiki or the uh, the deployment of new translations is almost automatic. It actually used to happen every day. Uh, for technical reasons, it unfortunately happens now. It's still automatic, but it only happens once a week. I really hope that someday it will uh, go back to happening every day. But uh, but it's mostly automated. So, it, but nobody even has to do almost anything to get the translations automatically deployed from Translate Wiki uh, to the live site. With wiki stats, unfortunately, there is no automatic deployment system. Um, the people who develop wiki stats, uh, it's, it's not based on media wiki, it's a completely separate piece of software, uh, and they just didn't deploy a fully automatic uh, translation deployment uh, uh, system. That's unfortunate. I, I agree that's frustrating uh, that you have to wait for so long and uh, ask to manually add the language. Um, I will, all, all I can say is I can try speaking to them and uh, convince them to make an automatic uh, translation deployment system. So yeah, like it's a totally reasonable uh, problem to complain about. Now about global templates, if, if, I, if I understood the question correctly, my uh, proposal is there. Uh, I wrote it uh, more than two years ago. <clears throat> Quite a lot of people support it. Uh, it simply needs a, a high-level decision from the technical uh, leadership. Um, what you can do about this, you can uh, read the proposal, you can discuss it. If you have any problems about this, I'm happy to hear about the problems. I, I spoke about this already to many, many people. Uh, I think as much as I could, I addressed all the possible problems. But you see, this, this is my personal pet project. Uh, for now, um, and um, to actually get this done, uh, a lot of engineering resources are needed. I heard one uh, 
estimation that it will take at least a year to develop this, uh, like a whole team of engineers working for a year. Um, I, I'm not sure it's true, but it sounds reasonable. So I hope that sometime in the foreseeable future, the leadership of the engineers uh, who develop the uh, core media wiki will be convinced that this should be done and that this will happen. Uh, to them, what you can do, you can uh, uh, try discussing this in uh, larger forums. You can try, uh, like as much as I can do, I'm trying to um, reach um, the people in the leadership and tell them that it's an important thing, but uh, if other people uh, also speak about this and not just me, it will probably hopefully be better. So, yeah, thank you for the questions. If we have time for more questions, I'm uh, available. And th thank you so much, uh, Amir. And uh, if I may ask a related question, um, since you've been involved in translation work for a very, very long time, um, you know, on the Uzbek Wikipedia, we have a major issue right now that uh, people are using the machine translation tool a lot. Uh, they love it. Um, but the quality of the translation is better than it used to be, but it's still horrible with really um, you know, funny examples and, and whatnot. And I kind of, you know, when I was in Macedonia last week, just started a discussion, hey, let's ban the translation function altogether like the, they did on the Indonesian um, Wikipedia. And guess what? Like 50 per, exactly 50% of our users supported, and exactly 50% voted against. And I was like, eh, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, but I was wondering, um, you know, based on your experience, um, what are some solutions we can consider? Uh, you know, this with this machine translation. What's your personal stance? Should we keep articles which are more or less okay? You can make sense. You know, we can you can understand what the author is trying to say, but at the same time, it's you know bad quality machine translation. And it's not like we can ban people just for using machine translation. I'm against banning people. You know, generally because uh, you know we we don't want to use a user. Uh, lose users, uh, that the retention is key. So I was wondering, you know, maybe you could tell a few words about, you know, what are some of our options? You know, should we just continue uh, having such articles, you know, which make sense but yeah. poor translation? Yeah, I understand. So um, machine translation, uh, the problems with machine translation, it's like the question is not related to the. Uh, not, not really related to the topic of the presentation, but I don't mind uh, answering. So uh, the problem of machine translation has existed for a much longer time than uh, the content translation uh, extension, which my team develops. Uh, it has existed for pretty much forever. Because machine translation uh, um, had existed long before Wikipedia itself. And uh, people uploaded uh, bad machine translations uh, long before 2015, when uh, content translation was first uh, deployed. Uh, in uh, content translation in Russian uh, is перевод uh, содержание. Um, and um, some people say that uh, content translation, the content translation extension, uh, makes it easier to upload uh, machine translations, which include also bad machine translations. So uh, if, a machine transla like, if a machine translation was edited by a good, responsible editor, then nobody should care that it was a machine translation at some point. And it also doesn't matter if it was created by uh, using the content translation extension or just by editing a wiki page and pasting the machine translation there. Content translation actually makes it easier to discover bad machine translations because they are marked as such. Uh, every uh, machine translation, um, uh, like every every page which is published by content translation, uh, has metadata uh, with the percent of machine translation uh, there. And uh, first, you can block uh, the publishing of machine translation where the percent of the changed words is uh, not enough. This was done in some languages successfully. And uh, these languages say that it improved the quality of the translation. So if it's bad for the language, you can adjust this uh, percent. We, we did this for many languages already, for, for Indonesian. Indonesian is the one I remember, but there were many others, I think for Arabic or a few others. Uh, so this is the, the simplest thing that you can do. All 
the articles created by content translation are tagged. They have a tag, which you can easily see in recent changes. So actually, if content translation exists and can be used by people, it makes it easier to discover bad machine translations. Because if somebody just creates a page, like an empty wiki page, and pastes a machine translation there, it's actually harder to discover because there is no tag there and there is no metadata. So we actually believe that it's, uh, we, I mean, the developers of content translation, we actually believe that, yes, there is a problem with publishing bad machine translations, but uh, that content translation makes them easier to discover, so that, that's one thing. Now, purely as a Wikipedia, uh, I'm saying this, not as a, one of the, not as a member of the team that develops uh, content translation, purely as a Wikipedia, long before content translation, the problem of bad machine translations uh, had existed, and there were policies in many Wikipedias that you are not supposed uh, to publish uh, machine translations without properly editing them. And if they are published, they will be deleted. If bad machine translations published, it's usually worse uh, than not having an article at all. And these bad machine translations will probably be deleted. And my recommendation is to simply follow these policies. Uh, these are sensible policies that exist in uh, many languages. And if there is no such policy in your language, you should probably adopt a, a similar policy. Um, you, like As an administrator, as, a, as an editor, as a wiki community member, um, you should make a decision. Uh, I see a, an article which is only about machine translation. What will take uh, less time? Will it take less time to write a new article from scratch? Or will it uh, take less time to correct the bad mistakes the machi that machine translation did? Uh, and if it takes more time, then you should probably just read the article. Uh, it's it's up to you, as uh, as the communities, um, just just adopt the policy. Um, my my uh, opinion about this is that like if I see too many, uh, like I, I have administrator permissions in some languages, and if I see a page with too many uh, uh, machine translation errors, I just delete it. And they notify the user, and the, if it's a user who uh, publishes too many bad machine translations, it's quite likely that that user will be blocked. Uh, so, so that the, the, the solution is quite simple. Content translation actually has relatively little to do this. Content translation makes it easier uh, to discover bad machine translations. Uh, yeah, I hope it answers the question. I think that we are out of time. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, I'm quite easy to find. Uh, I'm, I'll move to Russian. Меня очень легко найти. It's very easy to find me. Most of you knows me. My name is Amir, and if you have the questions about the translation or localization of the modules, please ask me. You can find me on Telegram and Wikipedia. So thank you so much. Have a nice day. True. <laughs> no, I didn't have a question. I just it's, it was a comment, more of a. You comment. have this. Let me teach you. Let me teach you a weird trick for learning Russian really well. The trick is to be born in Moscow. <laughs> That's a good thing, but it has been a, such a long time that you are not there. At least as far as I remember, which is like 15 years. But still, as you can see, it works. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, thanks for the presentation. It was very interesting not understanding it all, but anyhow, it was a good one. Thank you.